and loyal viewers of the NTV world tuning in to this week's of NTV Team Action Show. This is a great show and we are already mid-July 15th, 2013 and this is probably one of the best shows we've had all year long and probably it's a show. throughout the whole entire year. And it's a show. It's a brand new show. It's, a it's show. not a news, it's a show. We have it's actually a human interest show. Yes, it is. Because we have the greatest human interest stories that you can find locally, upper county, lower county, and around the world. Such as Buck Branneman. We get an interview with Mr. Buck Branneman. If you have not seen his movie, it's called Buck. And it's on Netflix, and it was the winner of Sundance one year. Yep, it's a great documentary about Buck Branneman, the horse whisperer of pretty much the world. We, uh, like Jeff said, of talk horses. of horses. We talk to him later on, and he lets us know about all the horse whispering conventions he's, he goes to every single year. And Europe, Asia, Japan. He travels all over. All over. And we also have Chief Ferguson in the studio going to sit down and talk to us about the Three Tenths Proposition Act. Very cool right there. Can't wait to be sitting down with Chief Ferguson. But first, I don't know if you guys out there heard, but I just heard via Nolan's cell phone, beep, beep. courtesy of U.S. Cellular. If you don't have U.S. Cellular, be sure to go down to Cleon, a little pitch right there. We at the Inland Network's Cleon office. Yes, and pick up your new U.S. Cellular phone. But Asian Airlines come out with false reporting Oh yeah. of some names, but I could be wrong. We've never been this bad. I'm, I could be wrong. Actually, the NTSB reported these names to a San Francisco News, not one of our sister stations. These are the names of the pilots on board Flight 214. And they had this news report about the Asiana flight that went down last week. Sum Ting Wong, We Too Low, Ho Li F Bang Ding Ow. Wow, I cannot believe those news anchors did not look at those names they were reading and put two and two together that those were probably fake names. Could be. KTVU Channel 2. We'll read anything that is put on that teleprompter. And very sad, too, with having three people die in this tragic accident out of the, uh, they had over 250 passengers and ages from 16 to 20 years old, and three passengers did lose their lives. So it is definitely not something to joke about, and the person at the NTSB hopefully will be fired for this mistake. He is definitely going to have to deal with some major consequences. Oh, yeah, this is huge sure. news. To get on our news station and all around the world. It's got to be big. This is a big deal. Run to Roslyn happened this last Saturday, July 13th. All the classic cars were there strutting their stuff, cruising the gut, and it was amazing, I got to say. There were some modern cars there as well. Well, there was. There were some uh, Corvettes. There's also this Rolls Royce I fell in love with. It was very cool. And to top it off, they did have that great Poupon. Pardon me. Do you have any great Poupon? Oh, oh, who would have thought? Jeff has nothing to say to that. I've uh, been coming for 31 years then. And what are you driving, Jim? This red 34 Ford Coupe here. Have you been driving it every uh, every year? No, I drink something different all the time. Oh, really? What else do you have? It's too big a list of things. <laughs> What's, What's your, your name? Favorite car? Uh, 53 Merc. Where is this one on the list of your favorites? Number two. Out of 31 years, what's been your favorite year so far? <laughs> Don't think about it, I've come so often. You just have a good time every time? Yeah. What'd you guys bring? 32 Ford. Milk color one? Yeah. I, a, I bought it out of Arizona, and uh, after I got it, I, uh, a week ago, it had no motor, no transmission, no rear end, no interior, and no wiring. I changed all that uh, in this last two weeks. I'm enjoying it. This is the first time I've been to it. I've known about it for quite a while, <laughs> and I just finally figured out I'm going to come up here so I rode my bike up.
Big Tilt volunteers who made that event happen. It's a great thing every year, and it seems as though it's getting bigger and bigger. Because the last couple yeah. years, it was kind of shy, and they've been pushing around the dates a lot more frequently, it seems like. I thought a couple years ago they had it in like kind of later August. August. Yeah. yeah. So I think bringing it closer to the 4th of July weekend is something important. Pioneer Day's all-you-can-eat breakfast happened July 6th, and we wanted to make sure to get these video clips out to you just in case you missed it and show all the great volunteers and the beautiful breakfast they cook. The breakfast was sponsored by Pioneer Beverage, and it's an annual event. We cook it. We've been on this for maybe 40 years. Pancakes, ham, and eggs. How is it? Really good. Yeah. Good day. Good day in Cleon. Maybe a hopefully. Thank you so much, Eddie, for getting those video clips of the Pioneer Day breakfast, all you can eat. <laughs> Always a great time with those slapjack, flapjacks, pan flapjacks pancakes, <laughs> slapjack. made with uh, bush light. Mm, love Very them. good. They are. Bush cakes. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but the Croatian picnic's coming up this Sunday. This Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Make so sure to sure. go to the park yep. and enjoy. Get your polka on. Yeah, they uh, they have the new beer garden set up in the tennis court, so they have the great polka music, Croatian fest. And um, you know what, Jeff? A lot of things are going on July 20th. Right now, we'd like to go to an interview with Linda about the Dollars for Scholars coming up July 27th at Sun Country. You can swing away, raise some great money for the scholarships for the students of the Cleom Roslyn High School. Linda. Hi, I'm Linda Metzger with Upper Kittitas County Dollars for Scholars. I'm here tonight to tell you about a golf tournament we have coming up July 27th. It's at Sun Country Golf Course and all funds benefit Upper Kittitas County Dollars for Scholars award recipients. This year we committed ourselves to over $24,000 and we're here to raise some money this year to keep that commitment going to our youth. We're looking for more players to come out and play with us. We have a limit of 144, so you need to get your you need to get your registrations in as soon as possible. We also need some sponsors, some whole sponsors. We always look for people who would like to donate a small amount of money or sponsor a whole and um, or sponsor some raffle gifts to help us raise money for the youth. Thank you, Linda, for that interview, and great job, Dollars for Scholars, putting on once again another great fundraiser to raise money for scholarships for the Cleon Roslyn High School graduates. This last year, Sky Stahl got $10,000 from Dollars for Scholars, so make sure to get those applications in and get ready for college. The Great Kids football team is looking for a new coach. Due to obligations work, that yep. is, the old coach Jeremy is going to be taking a leave of absence this year, and unfortunately, he's going to have to step down. So we are currently looking for a new Great Kids coach. So if you guys know of any good football players out there that would be interested, please contact the great kids. This is for the fifth and fourth graders, so please get out there and coach for great kids. This is very important to get our kids ready for the high school level to get on to state, and hopefully we can get a state championship in our lifetime. Friends Helping Friends Golf Tournament is going to be taking place at Sun Country this upcoming July 30th. This is the first annual, and it's in benefit for Rick Conway, who took a horrendous spill in near one of the lakes on hole four, and then he had major surgery. It's a $45 per person buy-in, four-man scramble, and it starts at 9 a.m. Once again, this is on July 30th, and it's for a wonderful cause. And you can sign up at the Inland Out Works offices in Roslyn or Cleon. So get out there in a the beautiful sun country and swing away to help Rick Conway go through this terrible time through life right now. It's very, very horrible, but mm -hmm. it makes you really realize and appreciate life a lot more because you don't realize like how fast your life can change just yeah. in the blink of an eye. It's not just picking up a golf ball. Yeah. A lot of prayers start. go out to Rick and his family. Yeah, fast recovery, Rick. 
Walk Around the Track is going on this July 20th and 21st. This is for the Relay for Life, and it will be held at the Cleon Roslyn High School Track and Field. So please get out there, raise a lot of money for the Relay for Life Cancer Research of America. That very same day, the Doggy and Troll Olympics, ARF is going to be putting it on in Runji Field. So be sure to get your trolls and doggies out there for a great competition. I'll be having my two little dogs out there, so hopefully you'll have your dogs or cats maybe out there. The 8th Annual Horse Days of Summer is going to be taking place on that same day as well on July 20th. This is going to be held at the Kittitas County Event Center in Indian Village in Ellensburg, Washington. They have adoption, horse sales, tax swaps, horse microchipping is also available and you must pre-register. And to do so, please call 509-306-0822. So many great festivities going on July 20th, so make sure you have that calendar marked. July 20th, there's going to be some great times. Ellensburg and Cleanelum and Roslyn. And now we're going to take a quick commercial break, and we'll be back with Chief Ferguson in an interview with Buck Brandman. Have you seen Cleanelum Farm and Homes Clothing Department lately? They've updated the whole department and have name brands like Carhartt, Columbia, Under Armour, and Timberland Work Boots. They also have a great selection of women's clothes, including a large assortment of women's bling jeans. They've got a great selection of fishing gear, camping and hiking supplies, guns, ammo, and gold panning equipment. Combine all of that with their hardware, electrical, and massive lawn and garden center, Farm and Home is really your one-stop shop. Conveniently located in downtown Cleolum. Wonderful, and everybody should come. A lot of the people that are coming into the market aren't from our community. They're stopping just to shop in our businesses and shop at the market. We have more vendors coming every week, and we're starting to get a huge variety of everything. Come and visit us at the market. It's awesome. If you haven't yet, come down to the Cleolum Public Market on Harris and First Street in downtown Cleolum. Open from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. You need more advertising in your business. That's a fact. What's also a fact is that MTV has what you're looking for and more. See, we don't just connect you with Central Washington. We connect you with the world via all of the resources that we've developed and that we're ready to share with you. Let's say that we shoot and edit a 30 second commercial for you. It runs on our channel 5 to 7 times a day, that's 35 to 49 times a week, and 140 to 196 times a month. On top of that, we air it on our semi-weekly show on our YouTube channel which can reach a virtually infinite audience. This must be a ridiculous price, right? Not even close. A two-month contract is only $250. So it's your choice. It's growth a priority for your business. In TV. Are you in? Welcome back to NTV's Team Action News. It is July 15th, 2013. I'm Jeffrey Jorgensen. And I'm Nolan Weiss. And like always, I want to move on to some... Civic News! short in civic news this week we just want to remind all our viewers out there to go attend the South Cleolum City Council meeting this Tuesday at 7 p.m. Voice your opinion down in South Cleolum City Hall. And that concludes Civic, civic News! And now we'd like to bring on Chief Ferguson talking about the three tenths proposition. Hey Chief, how you doing? It's always special to have a guest on our desk. Thank you so much for joining us, Chief Ferguson. Right now we're talking about the three-tenths proposition. Ballots are coming out this July 16th, so make sure you get those filled out. But just to let our audience members know, and Jeff and I know, what is the three-tenths proposition? Well, if you remember, uh, about six and a half years ago, we went in front of, we being law enforcement, went in front of the voters to impose a three-tenths sales tax increase. Uh, that money was to be used for police services, court services, and animal control services. So that did get passed six and a half years ago. Again, three-tenths of a sales tax is essentially equates to about a, a penny for, for every three dollars you spend in this county. So a latte? Yeah, we've said that before. It's about an additional penny on your latte in the morning. Which is, yeah, which is not Lattes too bad. Lattes are getting pretty expensive, though. I guess that's only a penny for our barbecue burrito and our soft drink that yes, we have absolutely. every morning. We've been actually telling our viewers wrong info. We were saying it was a 1% sales tax increase, but it's only three-tenths of 1%, and we just were informed on that just yeah. the other day by Lori Clemente. Yeah, we definitely want to make sure that is straightforward. It's three-tenths 
a 1% sales in increase. Well, it's actually not an increase because it's been going on for six years, correct? That's what I really want to stress is this is not a new tax. This is a renewal of the tax that was voted on by the voters. Uh, the reason we're here again is because when that was brought forward to the voters, it was brought forward with a sunset clause, a seven-year sunset clause. And so the purpose of that was that we felt that it was important that, that we would have to come back to the voters and, and, and prove to the voters that that money was spent responsibly and as it was intended for. Um, and I believe we've done that. It's time to come back in front of the voters for a, for a look at that or a renewal on that again. And then so then this sales tax increase or the three-tenths proposition is also going to be signed with the sunset clause as well. So you'll be back in another seven years after this goes through. Or yes, hopefully. there's definitely a, a seven-year sunset clause uh, in, the, in the verbiage on this, on okay. this proposition. And um, what have you guys gained from the six years with this new uh, percent increase? Well, because we're a regional police department, the, the three cities, Cleolum, Roslyn, South Cleolum, have combined their monies, uh, the, the revenues, the three-tenths revenues, and with that money, we've been able to fund one additional police officer. And when you're only a seven-man seven, seven man police department, having that additional officer is, is, is really important. It's, it's almost crucial. We provide 24-7 coverage to the three communities, so having that one officer is really a big deal. Anything less would make it really difficult. So we've been able to fund one additional officer, and then the city of Cleolum and the town of Roslyn have also been able to fund a part-time animal control position with that money. Which I gotta say, the streets have been animal clear and not as many accidents with animals in the uh, years that we've had this animal control, which has been really nice, I gotta say. We've actually seen a reduction in our, in our number of, uh, in, our, in our calls for service on, on uh, vicious type dogs and certainly seen a decline in our, in our animal bites. So we, we really believe in the program and we think it's making a difference out here. Very cool. Sure. How about uh, Lower County? How does the uh, three tenths proposition affect the Lower County, you know? Well, I know that, uh, that the Sheriff's Department was able to hire uh, uh, multiple officers, maybe up to five or six. I don't know the exact numbers, and, and, and Ellensburg as well. Um, I do know that, um, that I've heard the agency say that if this was not to pass, that we would be losing about 12 to 15 police officers countywide. That's really? So if you, if you look at the Ellensburg, you look at the town of Kittitas, you look at uh, the Sheriff's Department, us as well, and that's big. Yeah, uh, twelve to fifteen police officers is big in in a, in a county our size. Yeah, being a hub of Washington State where everybody goes to, you need law enforcement for not just the citizens of this of our beautiful town, but it's people that are coming into this beautiful town. And that's why this is crucial for us. Uh, obviously, we're a small community; our population is roughly four thousand. But we know that on any three day weekend, our numbers can can double, triple. Oh yeah. Um, we're a recreational destination community. People people come to our community to, to recreate and, and, and oftentimes find themselves in trouble with the law. I think that this three tenths is a real equitable way for those people to come into our community to pay their fair share. Right. Um, why should the citizens of the upper county or for Kittitas County have to pay jail costs, court costs, medical costs of people that come over here, find themselves at odds with the law, and then that burden falls on the taxpayers. Absolutely. Why not pass that, that cost on to the people that recreate? And yeah, that's community? smart. I didn't even think about it like that. It's really. kind of like us going over to Seattle. We'll have to pay, we have to pay that separate tax for the arenas or, yeah. or so forth. Why not have those guys come over here and pay the tax that we have to pay for? Absolutely. Yakima County is a fine example. You, uh, you go down and spend money down there. They pass their three tenths. So you're actually contributing to their law enforcement up there. Right. So, and there's an incredible amount of cost involved with incarcerations and court costs. And um, Again, we, we look at these three-day weekends and we see that 70% of our numbers, are, are our contacts, our arrests, our citations are people from outside the community, mm -hmm. right? outside the county rather. So uh, again, an equitable way for them to pay a share of their of their burden on law enforcement. That way it's not taxed on just homeowners and property owners. Yep, that's Definitely smart. makes sense to vote in my opinion, yes on this three-tenths proposition and just keep this going for the next six to seven years. That clause, the sunset clause will come up again. I bet you guys will have another stressful time, but the citizens of the upper and lower Kittitas County will come together and vote yes, <laughs> in my opinion. And remember the ballots come out tomorrow and I believe they close in August, early August, right? August 6th is the deadline. The ballots should be out on the 17th. Okay. 
So okay, voters perfect. should start seeing those in the mail. All right. And make sure to get those ballots in before August 6th for the three tenths proposition. Well, we want to thank Chief Ferguson for taking his time with NTV and with our viewers, letting us know more about the three tenths proposition that's coming up. Make sure to get those ballots in before August 6th. Don't be lazy and uh, make sure to vote. That's always important. And for more info, be sure to contact the information below and they can set you up with the committee yep. for the three tenths proposition. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. Thanks, Jeff. It's always good to have people sitting to our left. Yes, we always love guests to let us know what's going on. So please give us a call 649-3940 if you have something on your chest or something that's coming up. We would love to have you sit down with Jeff and I and express it or let people know about your event coming up because I love having guests. Absolutely. Gosh, just Chief sitting here just made my whole day exciting right there. And this is something very, very exciting for us mm -hmm. here at NTV. We scooped an interview with Buck Brandeman, the horse whisperer, one of the smartest, hard-headed guys I've ever got a chance to watch a movie based upon. He is an amazing person, and here is Buck Brandeman. Well, I'm Buck Brandeman. I live in Sheridan, Wyoming. Well, I'm doing a couple of horsemanship classes. I've been coming basically to this area for, gee, I bet 25 years now. So, a lot of people still interested. How many uh, how many lessons will you be doing this weekend? Well, there'll be two classes a day. We start at 9 in the morning, then go till noon, and then 1.30 to 4.30 uh, every day, and we finish up Monday night. Okay, and uh, what lessons did you touch on today? Well, you start off with kind of basic horsemanship, fundamentals, and then it's just progressive each day as they get to where they can do some movements and that's starting to be correct and I just make it a little bit more difficult as we go. Wow. Uh, I watched an interview on you and you were relating horse training to raising a child. Uh, I thought that was pretty interesting. Do you want to elaborate on that? Well, you know a lot of people have said that through learning things about the horses and working with horses that, that they found that there were some a lot of parallels between that and being a parent raising kids and which is really the for example the documentary that was out on me a couple years ago there were tons of people that came to my clinics after that that didn't even have horses but they were interested in the whole psychology of working with horses and and interested in ways that they thought maybe they could apply that to other things in their life and and it's most certainly true and and I had told them when they started to do the documentary, I said, so long as it's as your goal is to be able to relate to everyone, not just horse people. So the horse is really sort of a vehicle to maybe help us learn some things about ourselves. Uh, speaking of the film, uh, how has the film affected your life? Not really. You know, it's it's been an awful lot the same as years ago when I did The Horse Whisperer with Bob Redford. Everybody thought that my life was going to change. And, you know, it's a movie. And the documentary was certainly a lot more meaningful because it's all true. Mm -hmm. And it's real life. And there was a, a message in there that I hoped would be maybe helpful to people who are struggling in their life as well. So in that, it fulfilled its purpose. But it hasn't changed me at all. You know, you... You don't want to become delusional about those kind of things. And to me, I think the biggest mistake you can make, if, if some for some reason some notoriety comes to you, be careful you don't start believing your own press. Has there ever been a time that I've just been like, I don't want to deal with horses anymore? No, but I, I'm not the type of person to, to quit. All I've ever wanted to be was a good hand with horses. It's always been my passion. And there are heartaches and frustrations and disappointments. That's just goes along with it. Any anytime you're you're studying something that you want to become an art form, that it means that much to you, <clears throat> there's gonna be disappointment. But I've I've never quit anything I've ever done in my life, so I certainly wouldn't wouldn't start now. I'm Buck Branneman and I love NTV. 
Thank you, Buck Brandeman, for taking time out of your day to sit down with us here at NTV and tell us a little bit about what you do. And thank you for coming up into our gorgeous community and training all these people on how to train horses. Yep. You're, you're a person trainer is what you are. Well, That's yeah. kind of what he is. He's kind he of trains the people on how to train the horses. Well, that's how you kind of have be a horse whisperer is you got to train the people to help perform on a horse so he's a that's, person whisperer almost. he's a person whisperer too <laughs> it's just be. about showing love and that's what Brooke buck was all about he was such an awesome guy to talk to at the washington state horse park they're doing amazing things down there just to throw in a plug for the washington state horse park if you haven't went down there go check them out it's a beautiful place to ride and they're having um, great events every single weekend and we'd like to shut down tonight's news by wishing some people a very happy birthday on july 15th happy birthday to emily stanley happy birthday on the 18th, happy birthday to Mike McMullen and Kayla Sue Ophel. On July 19th, happy birthday, Christy Gonzalez and Ayla Nelson. And if we miss your birthday, please don't let it happen again. I want to wish you a big happy birthday to Linda Benzak. She was last week on July 11. As long as Jeffrey Jorgensen turning big 26. Happy birthday to you both. 24. No, 26. 24. It's been a lo couple local boys. Shooting some local show. Man, this has been a tough one for you. July 15, 2013. And just an update. Our softball, not doing very good. No. We're probably going to get third place. Yep. But come check us out Mondays and Wednesdays down at London Field where you can have a great time with the Rangers. Here we go. But let's go check out some video clips from the cruise in. Cru cruise 305 08. Oh, coming up to our community, this very small town. Never think that you would see no. such a god, such a great Such death. a god, a god of horses. Well, we want to thank Chief Ferguson for taking our time. Well, we want to. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Chief. <laughs>